up everyone welcome back to apollo art analysis this episode we're going to be taking a look at a piece by the ai generative artist proximus centauri b in this episode we're going to be talking a little bit about the shimmer of the divine we're going to talk about the profound power of ai generative art and then we're also going to talk about say the dream machine as an analogy to modern technology so let's jump right into it so whenever you first see this piece you know you're met with this really wide composition here and this is very very necessary as almost every single pixel or inch of pixel is filled with some, some type of content within the work at hand. And so we see that here, really grand introduction with that wide composition. And so we see what appears to be our main subject here in the center. And this is accented through kind of a really a lucid light on dark contrast there that really draws our attention and it also gives us really kind of ethereal shimmer and we're going to talk about that a little bit later and so we see here of course the accent really really brilliant and just the vast amount of negative space within the work at hand this midnight black is a perfect neutral backing to allow the emphasis to the highest degree possible so that really calls our attention and kind of pulls it there keeps it there with absolute ease and so we see this shimmer here and this is quite characteristic of divine works of art and what I mean by this is we normally associate, say, things like gemstones or an iridescent light or even luminescence as a whole with, with uh, spiritualism or themes of the divine as well. And so we definitely see that within the work at hand. There appears to be some type of crystalline form that makes up the outer object of this prismatic object or this prismatic subject here. And this is incredibly important because that does convey some of the densest degrees of divinity possible. And that really, really captures your eye with absolute ease. There's this kind of dreamlike sense or that surreal sense of that shimmer that we're looking at here. It's incredibly important. And so like I said, we see this kind of crystalline really like a monument here. And this kind of reminds me personally of, say, a, a futuristic Kaaba. And the Kaaba, of course, is one of the most, or the most holy Islamic site. And this actually holds the 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 the, the rock that links two different realms of the, of the light and the dark. And so with that in mind, you know, you definitely see this easily. You see this with... So with that in mind, it looks like this monument is set within this kind of temple type of environment. We see what appears to be a hallway there in the back, and it's definitely separated from that. So, so there's this sense that we're standing within some type of really grand room. Incredible introduction with that. I think that's also incredibly important to note. There is that grand sense of scale that really isolates the monument here and draws our attention, of course, to the highest degree possible. And so this piece, so in some conversations with the original artist, the artist told me that this was created after the dream machine and the dream machine is actually a kind of a light installation art piece and this was uh from decades ago and this is i believe it's from um jason somerville and then burrows those all three were went into creating the work at hand and or, or not the work at hand but went went into creating the dream machine which then inspired the work at hand here so i think that's incredibly important and so what it did was it kind of kind of an oscillating light effect where with closed eyes it was meant to be looked at with eyes closed it would create these kind of yantra-esque mandalas and it's it's pretty pretty interesting because imagine if you kind of rub your eyes if you've ever sat up or you kind of laid down just kind of rubbing your eyes you can see incredible geometric figures incredible geometric forms and i think that the dream machine does a really good job at replicating that and so with that in mind that is the inspiration of the work at hand but more so about how that connects to modern technology so modern screen-based devices really use that kind of mesmerizing light effect to really capture the attention and to, you know, there's something almost divine about that because, of course, screen devices are kind of like a portal. You know, we used to look at Harry Potter with those moving with those moving paintings and we're like, wow, that's kind of magic. There's no way I'd ever see that. Yet we have screens that could do that with things like digital art or motion media digital art. So I think that's also really important to note. So that mesmerizing nature of screens is incredibly important and it definitely is inherent within our modern technology. And so, you know, this piece was created, I believe it was in it was actually a mixed media piece from Jack's Diffusion, Disco Diffusion, uh, Procreate, and Photoshop. So four different programs that the uh, mixed media piece is the resulting uh, 
work that stands before us. It's incredibly, incredibly cool. And you see the effect of just how adding different mixed medias can create such a divine and such a mesmerizing uh, visual experience here. Definitely a metaphysical masterpiece with absolute ease. And so with these, with the continual rise of these AI generative art programs, it is it's quite profound that they're creating such divine scenes as the one before us. You know, what does it mean that it can create such profound scenes, such spiritual scenes as well? And so I hope you guys enjoyed this piece. You know, really think about that, that AI generative art. And I actually have one more piece from the artist here. And, you know, there wasn't anything specific that I felt that I could draw from one to the other other than, say, an intensity of light. So this piece was the garden number five coming from Proxima Centauri B, and then here we have uh, the dream machine coming from Proxima Centauri B as well. And so, you know, when you look at these, there's not necessarily anything inherent that you could draw between them, other than, say, intensity of light and, say, a divine or a magical scene. So I wanted to at least just show you the first piece that we showcased from Proxima and then the second piece that we've also showcased from Proxima. Really, really nice piece, really divine themes there, and shows that intensity of light with absolute ease. Hope you guys enjoyed. Hope you guys learned something. If you guys enjoyed this episode, go check out Proximus Centauri B. Doing some really good stuff over there. Definitely a nature lover. De definitely a, an appreciator or an appreciator of the AI generative art scene. Hope you guys enjoyed. Hope you guys learned something. My name is Apollo. This was Apollo Art Analysis, and I'll see you guys on the next episode. We hope you enjoyed today's episode. If you'd like to support our work directly, please check out our Apollo community tokens. Polar Art Exchange is an ecosystem of art appreciation which elevates artists each and every day. Thanks for listening.